every morning at this time. 15 minutes after 7 o'clock, former New Brunswick Ombudsman and child and youth advocate Bernard Richard is already busy with his latest assignment. Richard has agreed to look into how the Fredericton Police Force handled its investigation and decision to raid blogger Charles LeBlanc's apartment and seize his computer several months ago. Now, the charge of criminal libel has since been dropped, but lots of questions remain about the entire affair. The city of Fredericton asked Richard to conduct the independent review. Bernard Richard joins me now on the line to tell us about the review. Good morning, Mr. Richard. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Terry. Good to be uh, back with you. What's your mandate? How would you describe it? Well, I've been asked to uh, to review the, uh, the investigation file to uh, uh, and to find answers to those questions that you mentioned uh, uh, remain unanswered. To I, I think the the, the critical uh, question for the city is to uh, to ensure and ensure the public that uh, its uh, police force. Uh, has has integrity and and wouldn't abuse the significant powers that it has to uh, pursue any individual and, and in this case Charles Lebron. What are the questions that, as you begin this exercise, you think need to be addressed? Well, the questions have been raised by by several uh, people, some law professors at UNB and by the Civil uh, Liberties Association as well. Uh, but but I think that they are pretty pretty. Is basic and simple at, at the end of the day is is, uh, uh, is um, the the response uh, of the the police force here to a complaint by one of its officers, which already creates a bit of a a, 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 a different kind of situation, obviously, uh, and and how they uh, pursued with a fair bit of vigor, um, uh, Mr. LeBlanc, um, as a result of his. Uh, um, allegedly using uh, libelous language on, uh, on his blog, which I think mean, wouldn't surprise anyone who knows Charles LeBlanc. I mean, he, he certainly uh, is someone who uh, uh, blogs uh, vigorously, that, uh, and he has strong opinions and, and uh, never hesitates to use them. The issue here is that his uh, alleged victim was a police officer, and so that that somehow skewed the way the, the police force investigated would they have done uh, differently uh, if it uh, if the complainant had not been a police officer would it be you differently if if the victim had not been a police officer i mean all of those issues are important um, freedom of speech is a very important right uh, in, in the charter of rights and in our constitutional um, uh, rights that we have that we enjoy as canadians but none of the crafters of the charter of rights envision social media facebook tweeting and blogging when they did their work back in the early 80s so it's a different world and uh, so anyone can become a blogger essentially uh, there there are no codes of ethics uh, uh, journalistic training is not required right? the bloggers are not required to check their sources so it, it's it, it's a different world of there and that poses challenge for all police forces including the the Franklin police force who are the people you want to talk to well, I've already talked to uh, city officials, and I've talked to the chief and, and deputy chief, and I've talked to obviously to Mr. LeBlanc and his and his uh, lawyer as well. So, so that's a good start. We've talked about process. I haven't seen the file yet, so it's very early on. But we've talked about the process and how we could go about getting uh, all of the information, full disclosure from everyone. I want to know how they frame the issues themselves, and uh, I've asked them to to. Uh, uh, or at least invited them to, to provide input in writing if they, if they should want to do so. I'm certainly open uh, to hearing from anyone who, who has a, a, a direct or an indirect interest in, in the case. I, I think it poses some very, very interesting uh, questions in, in the era of the internet, the Occupy movement, we've seen so the student protests in, in Quebec, well beyond the borders of Canada, uh, all be influenced by, by this new age of, of communications that we're in. And I think those kinds of issues are important, not just for the city of Fredericton. I suppose that's a bit beyond uh, my, my mandate, but, but certainly those questions are out there and they're, they're, they're very fascinating, really. The world is, is changing as we speak in that regard. But 
you know, we all want to feel safe wherever we live, whether I'm in Tampa Bay this morning, you're in Fredericton, we all want to feel safe and, and police services are, are critical to the security and safety. We all want to feel, I've been in countries where it's not quite the same. On the other hand, we want to make sure that uh, those that are there to ensure that laws are respected and that we're safe and secure respect the laws themselves. And so I think these are important issues. I'm sure that's why the city uh, asked me to, to, to do this work, that they, they really feel that that's a, a critical part of, of, of having and keeping the confidence of the public. What power do you have to obtain information and interviews? Can you compel someone to talk no. to you? No, and that should be clear. I mean, this is, this is not a public inquiry. Only the provincial cabinet, as far as I know, can uh, can convene a public inquiry on an issue. It's done extremely rarely. I, I think, out of memory, that the last time that was done was uh, over the Kingsclear uh, issue in the in the '90s. So, uh, no, this is an investigation, a review. I, I I can't compel anyone. Certainly, everyone I've met has been has, has indicated their their interest, and in fact, their enthusiasm to participate in the review, so I really don't expect uh, any issues in that regard, but I, I cannot compel anyone to, uh, to appear or provide evidence if they don't want to. Is this a, the kind of investigation that, that should be done in a public way so the public can see the process unfold? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you that at the end of the process, I guess, because that's one of the questions that, that has been asked of me to determine whether uh, there should be a public inquiry over uh, whether there's a broader public interest here. Is it is it just how Charles LeBlanc was treated, or, or are there more fundamental issues that should be raised that, that perhaps to have it perhaps have implications for the whole province? And, and if, certainly, I, I won't be shy to to uh, recommend that if I think that that should be done, but it's way too early for me to, to speculate on that. Okay, so just so I'm clear though, you you have been asked to consider the, the possibility that maybe a broader public inquiry is warranted? Well, I, I've been told that, that uh, I'm free to carry out the investigation as I wish and, it, and that I will determine in my own judgment after I've seen uh, the evidence and, and, and talk to those people involved uh, to, uh, that I'm free to make the recommendations that I think uh, that I think should be made. So I, I probably wouldn't have accepted if it, it had been otherwise. So, and certainly that is a possibility. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a, a large possibility at this point. I mean, it's, it's extremely rare in any province and certainly in New Brunswick to have a full-blown uh, public inquiry on, on an issue, whether this warrants it or not. I, at this point, I'd be, I'd be hesitant to say that it does, but it's hard to say and I, I won't be able to, to say for sure until the end of the process. So you've already spoken to uh, the former police chief, Barry McKnight? Yes. And will you be speaking to him again? Yes, absolutely. Yes, he's, he's indicated his willingness to participate uh, uh, throughout the process. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that because I think his perspective, of course, is, is unique and important to understanding the, the whole, uh, how the whole investigation uh, took place and, and any particular challenges that, that this posed for the uh, Franklin Police Force. So his input is, is very important, but he's indicated uh, uh, quite willingly his, uh, his intention to participate. And his resignation would have no impact then on your investigation? Uh, well, before or after, it wouldn't, wouldn't really make any difference. I mean, it, it, I, can't sense, I can't compel anyone to, to, uh, to participate. Would, uh, to me, it, it's uh, irrelevant. Some have raised that as an issue, but he's uh, met him the day before he, I think it was the day before, two days before he, uh, he finished uh, on, the, on last Friday, and he indicated uh, quite clearly that uh, when the time comes, he will, he will sit down and, and speak with me. Now, when the police um, uh, sought to uh, lay the charge of a criminal liable, they, apparently that, that was cleared by a judge or that was approved by a judge. Will you be speaking to the judge who approved that, that charge? I don't really think that that's part of the issue, of course. I mean, the, the, the process that I'm really interested in is the police investigation and, and how they determined that they should seek a, a search warrant and, and, uh, and then prepare a, a file for, uh, uh, to, to present to the Crown Prosecutor. After that, I mean, I think the process is fairly normal. Uh, the Crown uh, Prosecutor does have a discretion.
discretion to accept or, or not accept the police file for prosecution. That's that's done on a almost on a daily basis in New Brunswick. So, uh, on, and then the crown prosecutor made the call for whatever reason. Could have could have been because uh, these kinds of uh, charges, uh, 301 of the criminal code, have been found to be un, unconstitutional uh, uh, with regard to the charter in, in three or four provinces in Canada. Might have been that. Might have been the file itself. I I don't know. And that's really not what I've been asked to look at. I've been asked to look at the investigation it, itself. Uh, was the fact that the complainant was a police officer uh, a factor in pursuing uh, Mr. LeBlanc in the fashion that he was pursued? Uh, was it or was it not? I, and uh, so, I mean, that I will find in the file itself, in the interviews with the chief, uh, perhaps the deputy chief, Possibly uh, some of the officers. I know that some have indicated that they would they want to meet with me. Uh, so I mean, the, 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 the policing po it, it's not an easy job in the best of, of times, and we know that. Uh, for instance, uh, with the institutionalization in, in New Brunswick and in the rest of the country, uh, that a number of, of, uh, of challenges are posed to uh, police. Uh, uh, that we kind of. Uh, joked in a way with the, the chief when I met him last week that he probably should be hiring more uh, social workers uh, and, and fewer police officers, but it, in a way it's a very serious issue uh, so that policing in, in this in this world that we live in now with uh, m m more challenging individuals uh, on our street, uh, uh, social media, uh, I think it, it really requires a uh, uh, a changing, uh, a change in police tactics and, and police procedures, um, and, and I'm not sure at this point exactly what I will recommend. But certainly that is again perhaps beyond the specific case of Charles Obama, but certainly an important issue for all uh, all police forces uh, in this country and, and well beyond. So, uh, really interesting issues in my view. You know, when you were approached, you had the option of saying, no, thank you, I'm enjoying my my semi-retirement, I'm enjoying my life in Cap Palais, and I'm enjoying my family, but you didn't. You accepted. Why? Well, I think this is the kind of thing that really, really motivates me. I mean, it's the kind of issue that, that I think is unusual. It, it, it causes me to, to reflect on, on issues that are important uh, for our society, and so it stimulates me. I mean, I'm, I'm really interested. Of course, I've known Charles Obama for, I don't know, 15 years, so I've, I've seen him camp out on the legislature lawn. I've seen him around town, as many many others have, so I, and I have... Uh, I know the parties, and, and I thought I, I mean I thought this is something that I can make a contribution to. So I, I mean these are the kinds of things that I that I like to do now that I'm uh, kind of retired. But, uh, but certainly yes, I mean I enjoy the the the, the, uh, the volunteer work that I do for Plan Canada, Plan International, other issues. But I, I mean, really as a lawyer, can you once a lawyer always a lawyer? I mean this 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 issue really for me is an interesting one and and I look forward to uh, to uh, working with uh, the good folks in Fredericton to to shedding some light on on the whole affair and how much time do you have to come to recommendations I haven't been imposed a deadline it's not full-time work for me because I've got uh, lots of other things uh, on the go but uh, but certainly I've said about three months I hope to complete and um, I have to do a fair bit of, of research and uh, and then uh, give uh, those who, who want to and have something to contribute some time to prepare their sub written submissions and then set up uh, interviews with them to to uh, discuss uh, what they've provided to me so and then some time to consider uh, what they will have said to me so I, I think three months is, is about right but it might be a bit longer and, and your recommendations will go directly to the city and, and then they're made public or how does that work uh, the city will determine that but I've been told that they would be made public so uh, they I to present my recommendations in a form uh, that can be made public so uh, uh, that's all I know for now but the city will determine whether to do that right away or or sometimes later certainly it's not rare for uh, governments of all of all stripes to to determine you know, whether they want to respond at the same time that they make a report public that, that really not my call 
but I've been told that it will be made public. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Terry. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bernard Richard is conducting a review into the arrest of Charles LeBlanc for criminal libel. Richard is the former New Brunswick Ombudsman and child and youth advocate. If you would like to respond to what you heard Mr. Richard say, please get in touch, info am at fredericton.cbc.ca. It's 7.30, it's time for the news. Here is Jennifer Sweet. People in Burton 